Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're going to start off with a launch to Jupiter but first I wanted to check out our contracts availability and see what we can pick up. We've got active right now two Jupiter uh, contracts, one Saturn flyby and the Ganymede landing contract. Um, so, and we will send another attempt at this on the next uh, Jupiter transfer window so don't worry about that. But, and hopefully we'll have more advanced technology to work with when we get to that. Uh, we are unlocking mature cryogenics, I believe, or something like that, which should have the M1 engine and possibly some upgrades to other engines. But in any case, um, the contracts that most interest me, uh, interest me is the moon landing mission and human orbital mission. I think we're going to do this orbital mission first, and I'll pick that one up. Um, we have to do it in a year, though, so let's uh, get on that. The crew rotation thing is sort of important. This uh, vessel Tug Alpha, I think I need to dock that with our um, Spaceport 2. Or either, either that or uh, deorbit that, because otherwise we'll never get the crew rotation for Spaceport 2. So I'm looking to handle that. I am also looking to send uh, another Spaceport, a Moon Port if you will, to the Moon. So that's something I want to do as well. Um, it can't be in this satellite orbit, though we do need to do some scanning of the moon, so that's another mission I would like to take care of. Okay, so there's a number of things. Probably not going to be doing a lunar impactor anymore, even though it wants that. And so uh, let me get building, and I'll see what I come up with. Okay, so I wanted to scan the lunar surface for resources, and... I guess the right thing to do is to get this survey scanner, uh, even though it says not supported by RO or RP0, I still want to be able to do in situ resource utilization. Um, the real ISRU mod I have for 1.2.2, but I don't know if I have one for 1.1.3, and I don't think I put it in this install. I don't know if that would change uh, these. Uh, resource scanners to be RP0 compatible or whether that was just RO compatibility. Uh, but yeah, in order to get to this science I have to unlock advanced exploration and so I've decided to spend some some science points for that. So we are unlocking that, it's not unlocked yet. And then we will proceed with this in the hope that this will allow us to scan for resources and start building up a possibility of in, in situ resource utilization and then, uh, well, hmm, ammonia oxidizer? Maybe I do have real ISRU in here. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, good. All right, so we do have real ISRU in here, and uh, that means that these units, um, which say non-RP0 or RO, but were actually meant for RO, otherwise they wouldn't produce the things that they do. Um, yeah, looks good. Uh, we have the potential here, so this is the line we want to go down to unlock that stuff, and uh, then we'll be able to make full use of the lunar surface and Mars surface and asteroids and everything. We haven't actually visited an asteroid. I really need to do that, but we haven't been getting any contracts for it, have we? Speaking of which, have we unlocked the tracking station so we can see asteroids? That could be helpful. Um, yeah, we haven't got unknown object tracking. Let's, let's do that. That opens up more possibilities for us. It's expensive, but it also takes time, right? So, uh, we will have to wait on the tracking station upgrade. 68 days, though, it's not too bad. Tell you what, uh, let's have a quick launch before I talk about the other spacecraft that I have planned. Let's get that uh, Jupiter mission underway and, uh... Then we can move on to primarily moon stuff. Okay, here we are with our Jupiter probe. SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. We really need to check what science we haven't done around the moon. And really flesh out moon science so that we can unlock more technologies. I'm very interested in getting the scanner technologies ready by the time we get the Voyager transfer window so that we can potentially send some scanners 
to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. To their moons in particular. So this is basically a duplicate of a mission we've already sent. But since that worked out, we can maybe make use of this somehow. Okay, everything nominal so far. Okay, engines out and separation. Very good. Can flatten out now. Alright, getting ready for separation here. Everything has gone well with the lower stages. The boosters and the core. And separation. Alright, good ignition on the NK-31. Let's get rid of the fairing now. Could have gotten rid of it earlier, but this is safer. As we make orbits, I don't know whether I really want to attempt a restart instead of just letting this continue burning. With that much delta V though, maybe it's better. Okay, we'll, we'll shut down and attempt a restart of this engine using RCS for Ullage. Hopefully that'll work out. Um, so, we will uh, plot for exit. Let's see what Megjib has to say about uh, potential intercept. Okay, ASAP. Any time now? Uh, create node. 32 minutes. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Right now we have the upper stages locked. Uh, looks like uh, we'll need that one and a little bit of that one as well. Let's just leave them unlocked for now. And then the probe has a further amount that is currently locked. So we have 8,909 without the probe zone fuel. As far as timing is concerned, we are expecting to need quite a lot of time to make this burn. Probably start seven to eight minutes ahead of the node. Okay, let's see if it's settled. Yes, it is, so ignition. Off we go to Jupiter again. We'll have to make some refinements on this trajectory. Especially since it doesn't actually show an encounter right now. Hmm, that's peculiar, isn't it? I think it wanted us to in, uh, encounter Jupiter over there. It's just not showing it. Okay, set, and ignition. Okay, all is well. Probably should tune this to Earth, huh? We're gonna have a heck of a time eventually if we do not. Activate. Okay, and... Let's come out of physical time warp before separating. Yeah, come on. Alright. Come on, you already got stuck a little bit already. Alright, set. And... There we go. And the flight continues. Okay, here we go again. And separation. Our happy little Gemini lander engine now, and we've got we've got a substantial amount of fuel here. 
We really need to make sure we actually get an encounter with Jupiter, though. We'll get close, and then I'll probably have some replotting to do. On the bright side, again, uh, good timing. Uh, the ascending node and everything just makes it a very nice transfer window. So even though it's not showing a transfer here, I don't anticipate any problems. Coming in reasonably flat and in the right direction, it goes all wild. Okay. Uh, I haven't decided what I want to hit with this since, well, I mean, we've got all sorts of things that we could do. Could keep it fairly loose right now and then just decide later. Yep, uh, no particular commitment here. I'm just going to keep it like this. And we're going to do a mid-course correction to flatten out with respect to the moons. So uh, let me do, uh, not in 15 years, no. Uh, no. Get back to this. Uh, it's not going to let me make a maneuver, is it? wants me to make a maneuver on my resulting orbit, but not on my outward bound orbit. Okay, it's still not letting me make a maneuver on my trajectory. Well, let me go back to the tracking station and come back here and see if I can. Okay, well it still won't let me make a maneuver node on the orbit between Earth and uh, Jupiter, but it did let me make a maneuver in Jupiter SOI, so I'll take this for now, especially since we've got a Callisto encounter. I don't think we've done any science in Callisto SOI. This will just be a flyby, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. We could also possibly manage the both capture around Jupiter and the flyby of Callisto if we pull it out a little bit more this way. Um, maybe I should see if we can do that. Hold on a sec. So we go out like this. Uh, why, why don't we set Callisto as a target? And we would like to be flattened out a little bit more. There we go. So this produces both a capture at Jupiter and an entry into Callisto SOI. And we could probably finagle it so that's even better than it is right now. Okay, there we go. A nice close approach to Callisto. It'll cost... Well, it'll cost probably everything we've got, but we'll leave it at that. Okay, and we will make orbit around Jupiter just for the heck of it. Sounds like a plan. So let's add that to the alarm clock. And then we will proceed with our moon missions. Oh, uh, let's take a look at that uh, one tug alpha that uh, keeps being treated like a station and see if we can maneuver it to our spaceport, uh, spaceport 2. All right, it looks like we've got a maneuver with uh, 55 meters per second to rendezvous with the station. We, we don't get very close with this plot, but this plot was made by... Mechjeb, so I just had it do the home and transfer thing. So we'll have to see. Um, it says their relative speed is 73 meters per second once we get there. Problem is that uh, this, uh, which is really spaceport one, um, these thrusters are sort of on the wrong side. I'm not entirely sure I want to do the whole flippy thing, uh, flip it all around. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take the one kilonewton thrusters on this end to do it. But let's see, how much how much actual delta V do we have just with the MMH and N204 with this if we don't use uh, these engines? Do we have 55 meters per second is what I'm asking. Of course, we, we could be nasty and try and light these engines here, the, uh, even though they're sort of facing the rest of the station, but I would rather not, honestly. It seems like a bad idea. Well, we have 112 meters per second, and it looks like it would take uh, 11 minutes to burn that, maybe? Assuming that this is right, so I guess it's doable. Just uh, gotta take some time, but I, I'll 
I'll go with that for now. And I'll try and burn the RCS at the same time to help it out, even though that's not going to do too much. Anyway, to the VAB and I'll show you our moon missions. Okay, so in order to launch a Kerbal into orbit around the moon and then return that Kerbal safely, we are going to use this, the Orpheus 2 spacecraft on the Olympus rocket. The Olympus rocket could be uh, termed the Nico 1640, but I decided to give it its own unique name because, well, all the, oh sorry, uh, all the Nico names are getting a little bit worn out here, and uh, so we should get some new names. But basically, the NK-33s uh, are on these boosters. We have a core with NK-15Vs. But, um, yeah, nominally, we would just light the NK-33s on the ground. We would not light the vacuum engines yet. And then after the boosters separate, well, right before the boosters separate, we could light the core engines. But if one of the booster engines went out, Shortly after launch, we would need to light the core engines in order to keep going, otherwise the thrust weight ratio might be low. Uh, but anyway, the Orpheus 2 spacecraft is what you see here, and we've got all of its fuel locked right now, so the only delta V you see up here is from the rocket itself. So this rocket uh, can definitely toss about 30 tons to the moon. And that's when it's about 2,000 tons in mass altogether. And since the Saturn V could do uh, 45 tons to 48 tons while being 3,000 tons in total mass, that's about the same sort of ratio we're talking about. So anyway, uh, we've, we've got the fuel locked. If we unlock all the fuel on the spacecraft, we see that it has 2,245 meters per second now, with uh, option, if we fully fueled it up, uh, to have 3067 and probably more than that since we'd lose the launch escape system and 34 tons altogether is the mass but we don't need all that this time and we will lock it up okay and so that's the idea and so that 2000 meters per second should be enough to make orbit around the moon and then return the Kerbal back home we hope um, if nothing else goes wrong. The Orpheus 2 has upgraded solar panels. It does have uh, fuel cells if necessary. It has other guidance units if for some reason our Kerbal uh, isn't a pilot or our Kerbals, our three Kerbals could go in there. I don't know if we're gonna send three this time since the contract only requires one. So let's just verify. Yeah, uh, just one Kerbal in orbit so let's just do that to test out the system but this is going to be a crew transfer system to a lunar station and potentially it could also uh, be launched to the moon um, make over around the moon and then uh, sort of come back and then air break a few times Nah, I don't think so that's probably too complicated I was thinking about if it could transfer to the moon and then uh, come back and then the rendezvous with the earth station but that'll take a different system Okay, so, yeah, that, that's too much delta-v. What's, uh, well, as far as pilots go, let me move this. Uh, not carrying Joan with us. All our pilots are, have got one star. I guess this would get somebody an extra star. I think Valentina has been to the moon. I think Lyra is the only one who hasn't. So we'll have Lyra do it. Though they'll let me pick uh, who goes in after we build the rocket. It's pretty quick to build. It's only 68,000 funds too, so it's not the most taxing rocket. You can see 48 days to build it. So yeah, I'll probably build two of them. Alright, and of course if we have a crew transfer vehicle that can go to the moon, we might as well have something to go to. And to that end, we have a station, Moonport 1, and looks rather small on top of this launcher because this is all sides to the Saturn instrument unit, and of course it is still the Olympus launcher. The Olympus launcher will have a little bit more to do in this case because, well, there's a heavier payload, it's actually 32 tons, and we're trying to uh, hopefully get it on a trajectory to the moon and then it's going to make its own orbit there. It's got 1,027 meters per second to do that. It's going to take quite a while to burn that amount of delta V. 
But yep, this is our first moon port. Of course, it looks a lot like the space ports that we've already launched intentionally because those were pretty good tests of the whole system. And we've got some good solar panels on the bottom. Hopefully it'll all work out. <laughs> what can I say? So yeah, that's what we're going to launch over to the moon as our first space station. Okay, so uh, let's, and it costs about the same as the crew transfer vehicle, by the way. So that's interesting. Fairly cheap. Uh, we'll have to watch out for staging right there. Okay. Okay, well, while the moon missions are under construction, we've got this business to attend to. Uh, to set up, hopefully, proper crew rotations with our station. I don't know if this is the best way of going about it. This is probably pretty cumbersome. Uh, let me see what kind of actual thrust do we produce without the Gemini lander engines. Well, it'll take some time. I'm not using the one kilonewton thrusters right now. I'll try and be patient about it. Actually, it turns out that the one kilonewton thrusters must be misconfigured because they say no propellants. Yeah. So we're just on RCS. Well, okay, maybe it's because those are locked. Come on. No, I don't think so. Still not firing, so. Yep, just RCS here. Only because I don't want to risk blasting the station with our Lunar Gemini Lander engines. Okay, so now we've got close approach distance of under 25 kilometers, which sounds pretty wide, but the problem is that if I keep burning towards it, we're increasing our relative speed, and it's pretty painful to do these burns. So I'll want to fix that over there and hopefully get a nice approach over here at this other intersect. Right now we're uh, dropping our periapsis below the orbit of the station of Spaceport 2. So we don't want to proceed with that any further. Okay, let's just get to that intersect point and see what we can do. Of course we want to start doing what we need to do well ahead of that because it's going to take some time. Okay, after a somewhat arduous process of approaching Spaceport 2, we are now entering render range here. 7 meters per second gap between us and the target. Well, render range, of course, is taking some time to load Spaceport 2, hopefully not too long. We're about to add something more to it after all, so... Yeah, things are getting big. Oop, and KOS had a little sound for us for some reason. Okay, so let's just uh, go plus target. And I'll start slowing down here. We'll actually want to flip this around and dock on this end here. And that's because I want the tug to be free to do other things after it's brought this module to the station. I don't want it to be caught between things. Okay, well that's a pretty darn close approach distance. Yep, I'd say that's just fine. Okay, so let's control from here now, and it will flip around. And of course, closest approach distance will deviate, but that's fine. We haven't even selected a docking port yet. Now this module will add extra power draw to the to the station, so hopefully it's solar panel modules will be able to handle that. It's uh, this portions, you know, Spaceport 1's own solar panels were never particularly good enough to deal with it. 
Okay, we're on final approach here. I'm trying to dock this on the opposite side of the capsule. And I believe we are an Apollo docking system on this side of this. Yes, we are. Very important to get the right kind of docking port since we've been using two of them. Let's go negative parallel here to help with orientation. Okay, now we're looking a lot better off. Very nice view. Well, I, I didn't really want to dock this to Spaceport 2 because of that weird gap on it, but it hasn't really done anything wrong so far, and it's carrying plenty of food, water, and oxygen, and of course extra room for our Kerbals. So this could be a good deal altogether. Well, our truss, our solar truss, seems to have a bit of a problem, doesn't it? I, I thought those were, weren't those straight segments? Maybe, maybe they were folding out. I hope they were folding out and that it's not got some problem. forgot if that was how it was supposed to look. I don't think so. I have a sneaky feeling something went wrong there. I don't know, it seems a bit messy to me. But it's close. Bump. Uh, it's, that's a forcible bump. Yes, it is. All right, all docked together. I think uh, probably that tug can be moved somewhere else, but not right now. Let's see. Let's make sure that this is all named properly. And then we will see about that contract. So rename vessel, uh, Spaceport 2, except... So hopefully this is all Spaceport 2 now. And yeah, let's go to the, the Mission Control building and see whether the contract is updated and for this complex instead of just that portion there. Okay, well it says Spaceport 2 here. A crew at least two Kerbals rendezvous with Spaceport 2. Keep two crew, at least two crew aboard the station for 30 days and then return that crew home. And we have to do that in 163 days. We've already got crew capsules constructed. We could send them on anything. But what's interesting is uh, maybe do this, launch the space station. Well, not launch the space station. It's, uh, it says launch the space station there, but crew rotation plus human orbital, uh, Kerbal orbital. Launch at least three Kerbals so we'll use the, our uh, new spacecraft, the Orpheus, and um, it wants it below 300 kilometers for 12 days for some reason. Hmm. Well, that's a separate sort of thing, but we could do that. We could do that with the second Orpheus that we're going to be launching. Maybe we should just launch the Orpheus into low Earth orbit first, test it out and then do the lunar mission later. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think we can do this. Let's pick it up. We've got a lot of missions now. And so next time we will use the vehicles that I showed off today. They will have been built and we are going to do Earth and Moon missions for, for a while. I mean, occasionally we'll have to pop out over to these to take care of maneuvers and make sure they're all right. But we've got a long list of inter, uh, planetary probes. The next set of probes will be on this Earth to Jupiter transfer window in 374 days, but uh, the contracts for these will be up by then. So we have to do the human orbital here, uh, this one around the moon, and the crew rotation before we even get to uh, do the next Jupiter set of missions. All right, 
So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.